What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Can you guys see me? Can you guys see me? Mm. I see myself on my computer. Can you guys see me? Yes, can you guys see me? Can y'all see me? Can you guys hear me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Okay, yay! What's going on, everybody? As you know, I am Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cutie, reporting for duty, always do the Lord's work once again. And today, we are blessed with the opportunity to have Rebecca. Yes, Rebecca from America's Next Top Model, Cycle 4, in the classroom, dropping never before heard. A and T M T, and I am excited. First of all, I want to thank everybody for being patient with our first attempt at doing this live earlier today. For some reason, the internet connection on Instagram was bothering us, and we had to bind Tyra and run over here to YouTube. So, thank you guys so much for being patient. Thank you guys so much for tuning in right now. Please like, share, all my Reddit friends, Twitter friends, Facebook friends, Instagram friends. Share, 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 because we are getting into the things of the things on today. Guys, as I said before, this is Rebecca. Rebecca, an ATM icon. Truly, she is. I mean, you can't talk about ATM without talking about Rebecca. She's one of the most really iconic people that's ever been on the show. She's given us, she's been a part of two iconic moments. Three, really. She fell. She had a oopsie doopsie poopsie at elimination. Call the police. One. Two, she was a part of the first ever double elimination on top model. And three, she's standing right there next to Tiffany while Tyra is yelling. I just want y'all to think that on Wi-Fi went out of there and fucking with you. We were ready for you. <laughs> this is really dope, guys. I just want to thank all of y'all. Because we're about to get into it and without further ado, with a better in internet connection, let's welcome to the classroom, Rebecca. Not with the, not with the mic muted. Did, did you meet your mic? Hold on. I'm trying to... Uh, one second. Oh, got it. Okay, let's try this one more time. Let's try this one more time. Let's add her back in. Can you hear me? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> what is Jesus! This I'm so sorry. And now my dog is, I'm yelling, so she's joining me. Oh, what a... No, you're totally fine. Thank you so much we for being it. patient, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is so cool. <laughs> this is so weird, but it's really cool. <laughs> no, thank you. So, of course, like I told you, we're going to do a little redo since we're redoing it. Tell me what made you agree to have this chat with me about your time on Top Model? Um, first of all, I think it's funny that actually anyone cares what I have to say. And things like enough time has gone by. I haven't talked about top model in a very long time. And there are things that I've never said before. And I feel like, you know, now is the time to just be honest, be truthful. You know, things were shown in a different way than they really happened. And I'm okay with just getting the truth out there and, you know, living my authentic life. It is what it is, but think people think different things than what really happened. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to share this one with you. I'm excited. And I know my friends out there watching are so excited. So going back a little bit, you actually auditioned for Cycle 2 first and yep. were a semifinalist. Tell us about your time auditioning for Top Model Cycle 2. 
Um, well, um, kind of to recap what I said a little bit ago, if it worked or didn't work, but um, my best friend at the time, we were flight attendants, and she had seen this show on TV called America's Next Top Model, and she knew that I had done all the local work for people. So, like reality TV. So I thought it was like a legit competition. I was like, yeah, I literally have no idea. I have no money. I can't go to New York on my own. How else am I going to get out of this town if this is something I really want to do? So I was like, what do I have to lose? So I sent the videotape in, you know, and got called to the next step. And there was like two or three different like steps to it. And then I got called to LA for the final audition there. And um, yeah, and I choked. I totally just <laughs> choked. <laughs> and uh -huh. I was so mad at myself. And I knew I could do better. And so then that made me try it again for, uh, I always want to say season, but it's cycle. It's it's weird. So cycle four, because they pumped out more than one in a year. So for cycle four, I came back and I wanted to redeem myself a little bit. Yeah. What were some of the difference differences between cycle two auditioning being mm -hmm. there and cycle four auditioning being there? Uh, cycle two they put every girl in a hotel room they took your phone you couldn't have a newspaper a magazine like anything they just put you in a room and you had to do whatever they wanted you to do when they wanted you to do it so you're literally sitting in a room it was kind of like a quarantine before this whole pandemic thing right i was <laughs> stuck in a room i was talking to myself i was so lonely i couldn't call anyone i think they even came in and took the phone out of the hotel room and um and then all of a sudden they kept us all separate. So we didn't, we only got to see each other, like the other girls that were auditioning when they were like, all right, dinner, roll call, let's go. One by one, you get your plate, you can like say hi, and then you like go back to your room, kind of a thing. Um, so that was really lonely. And I, you know, all of a sudden you go from nothing to like everything. And I was, I was shell shocked. So cycle four, they realized they want to see the whole point of the show is the fights, the drama, the this, the that. And so they wanted to film us all. How, who gets along? Who fights? Who's this? You know, they didn't cast it as the best models of the group. Mm -hmm. um, they cast it as a TV show of personalities, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, across the board. And so it was totally different. The whole casting process was episode one. So you can see how that all went down. Did you see anybody from Anti and Cycle 2 while you were there? that made it like onto the final um group of girls who got into the house i think so because for cycle two well for every cycle they make you take like this hours long psych test right to see if you're like mentally stable enough to handle tv so we were literally sitting in a conference room at a hotel and i can remember looking around i think i remember shandy and Joanna. um i don't really know i mean they looked familiar like i was like oh yeah i think i remember that girl Mm -hmm. And I'm actually thankful I didn't get on that cycle, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just because Tyra made him do crazy, like, different stuff that I would have not been comfortable doing. So, thank you. I bombed it on purpose. I went on the right cycle. Yes, yes. So, let's get into cycle four. So, I think to kick this thing okay. off, I'm going to give the kitties what they love the most when I do these, which is ATM roll call where I name everyone. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know. Don't I know how this goes. Uh -uh. Huh? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I won't get shy on you. Yes. Don't get shy on me now. <laughs> I'm going to name everyone who was cast on your cycle, the girls, the other on-screen talent, and the judges. And you are going to tell me the first thing that comes to mm. your brain. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's ugly, or whether it is indifferent. Are you, okay. Rebecca, ready? No, but let's do it. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. First on the list is Brita. Brita's a sweetheart. I feel like she kind of got screwed over. Um, really? Yeah. She was a working, beautiful model. She was doing all sorts of stuff. They never gave her a makeover. They kicked her off first. They revealed her age. Um, and like once that was out of the bag, like age is a big deal. Like you don't have to say things you, like how old you are. You, your age is what you look like. And so I got along very well with Frida. I thought she was an amazing girl and I was really sad to see her leave. How was that first photo shoot for you guys? You guys were aliens in 
I think downtown, it was in New York or were you guys in LA? You guys were in New York. Well, it was in LA. No, we were in LA, but it was a, um, uh, what's Universal Studios? I don't know what studios we were at. Universal it was Studios, in New York. that's what it was. Mm -hmm. It was It was a New York soundstage. So oh, it looked okay. like we were in New York, but we weren't in gotcha. New York. It was like, yeah. And you guys were on the police cars and you guys had like all this makeup and these these really cool looks. Nigel Barker was the um, photographer. How was that first photo shoot for you? Call the police. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. She is I had to throw that in there. living. <laughs> no, that was fun. That was really, um, that was our first day. I'll, I remember being pissed when that day started. They, we were in LA because we did like all the promo stuff and the photo shoots before, like we actually like filmed the season and moved into the house. So we were doing stuff for days, like all the underwater photo shoot and like all the promo stuff. And then you, like, you're just at the liberty of production. You get in a van and they take you where they take you. You have where no idea where you're going. Yeah. And so we show up at this studio and we all line up and okay. And cameras and we're waiting and waiting and waiting. And then Mr. J pops out and I don't know who else. And they're like, you guys are staying in LA on a New York sound set. And I was like, this sucks. I want to go to New York City. Like, New York is where modeling is at. Like, LA is, yes, a whole different type of modeling market. But I wanted to go to New York. And I was mm -hmm. so bummed. And then it just went into, like, you know, a 14-hour day of photo shoots. But um, it was really fun. Janice was hanging around on set. You know, we got to chit-chat. It was, like, the first real day. But it was long because then we moved into the house that night. And that was a whole nother thing. So, um, oh, it was my 22nd birthday that day. It was really? my birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Happy, okay. 25,000 so, years ago. That was my birthday. I have a bunch of questions now. Okay. Because okay. I remember this underwater shoot promo for Soccer 4. How was that? Was Tyra there? Give me the rundown. I, okay, I'm going to be fully honest. A lot of stuff I've, I've forgotten. Yeah. Maybe because I've chosen to forget it. But it was like 17 or 18 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, but no, I think Tyra was there. She was there. And all I remember is like to get, because I was like swimming. I was like kind of at an angle. And I had to lay on this like clear plastic thing to like lay that way. And I was bruised. <laughs> like my ribs and my hip were bruised because I had to lay there for so long and like try to get the whatever, because it was so hard. And it was kind of, for me, it was a little painful, but I think it turned out really cool. I like how they did it all and whatever the theme was kind of cheesy, but I think it turned out pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How was Janice Dickinson? I like Janice. She was fun. She was, she's, she says whatever she wants. I remember we were all getting our hair and makeup done for the first alien shoot there. And um, that was the first time I'd seen her. I really don't think I knew who the judges were going to even be. And she showed up on set for the alien photo shoot one. And she's like, hey, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, Minnesota. She's like, oh, I did time in rehab there. And I just <laughs> laughed. And then, <laughs> and then we chatted a little bit. You don't see it on camera much as it's, you know, just like a millisecond of interactions. But. From that day, I just I just thought she was fun because she would actually come around. Like she didn't have to be there. She wasn't like part of it, but she mm -hmm. was she was cool enough. She wanted to just come and hang out with us and like maybe get to know us and see who we were. I don't know, but I I like Janice Dickinson. Yes. Yeah. And so okay, so the first episode, Ebony, not Ebony, Brandy yeah. was in a conundrum mm -hmm. because she felt like she had been waiting so long and she was so tight. Was the day, how long was that day? Do you remember? Okay, it was a long day. I will give her that. But she was stomping around and just mad. Like, I remember thinking like, this is the this is day one. Like you were in it for the long haul. You can't be walking around so mad. And she was. And people would, you know, kind of take her aside and calm her down and this and that. But God bless, she's a great girl. But it, it, it was a long day. I mean, it was. Mm -hmm probably 12 hours on that shoot just that alien shoot and then and then i think moving to the house was like another two three four hours it's long yep on average how long did you think you slept each night not much no it depended on what we were doing if we were doing like photo shoot days because like a week 
in TV time was like, was it four days? It was like photo, sh no, like challenge day, interview day, photo shoot day, and then like judging day or some, mm -hmm. something like that. I don't know. So, I mean, it, our schedule was jam packed. We didn't get to sleep very much. No, it was, it was that added to it. Like I need sleep. I don't do well without sleep. So were they feeding you? <laughs> yes. But here's something that I don't think a lot of people know. We got a per diem. We got about like 35 to $40 a day, but we had to spend that money on whatever food we wanted in the house. So if I, I would make it like production would say, all right, make your, like whoever made it through eliminations the next morning, they say, all right, make your grocery list. Like, what do you guys want or need? Well, you put whatever on your list. And then the per diem that they gave you, you had to pay for that. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, but now, but now, now hearing from you, it prompts me to ask this question: How were you, in your case, paying for your food there, as well as if you were paying for your life back at home because you were gone for how many months? I was. I think it was like a month and a half, maybe two months. But that's the thing. Like, I got bills. I got rent. I got this. I would try to like. I would like pare down my list so I could try to like save money and bring it home. When I came home, I think I had $180 to come home. And thank God, like my fiance at the time, now husband, um, he was amazing. You married him. He, yeah. yeah. We've, we got married. Yes. Congratulations. So I'm like, I'm maybe so what, lucky. I'm like, what, 15 years <laughs> late, but congratulations. Thank you. No, but he took the brunt of it. He supported us. Like we lived together at the time and he, he was amazing. He helped out. He took care of everything so I could, he supported me. He let me follow my dreams. And so I was trying to do my part and like, you know, not get that box of granola bars so I could save $3 to bring it home. And it was literally 180 bucks I got to bring home to put to like a bill. It didn't cover a single bill, but whatever. Yeah. My husband was amazing. Okay, on to the next person. And just for everyone that's wondering, because we're on YouTube Live, I have my MacBook right here and I have all my questions down. So that's why I keep looking down as well as to check the comments. Um, next on the list is Sarah. Sarah, I liked Sarah. I I really did like her. She was very sweet. I We were in the same room in the house. Like we lived in the same room. There was like three different bedrooms and she was with me. Um, but when they got the makeover time, she had long hair and she was beautiful and they chopped it up to here and she hated it. Like literally hated it. She didn't feel confident. She felt, didn't feel good. And you know, that sucks as a woman. Like if you hate the way you look, that sucks. And so I know she was upset about that. And then I think she got eliminated the, um, the episode after the makeover. So she's like, I cut my hair for nothing. And then she went silent. We never heard from Sarah again, which I didn't know you could do that because I thought we signed our life away in that contract. She never came to the upfronts. She never came to any of the, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that happened afterwards. She never showed up. She was never to be heard from again. And oh so I don't know. I, I hope she's doing okay because I, I thought she was a sweet girl and I felt really bad for her. The way you, you just described that sounded like an urban legend. Like we never heard from her again. I mean, she's out there somewhere, somewhere. Hope she is. Hey, Sarah, girl. If you're out there, Sarah, I hope you're doing well. I thought you were just a sweetheart. How was the makeover experience for you? Oh, I loved it. I got hair. Like Did I, I have, know bad. I have no hair. I like I can't grow hair. My my ponytail is like the size of like a uh, like that. So. <laughs> they gave me extensions. I was like, bring it. This is amazing. I still choose my Halloween costumes to this day for anything that I can wear a wig for because I just want hair. Mm -hmm. And I've tried extensions before and after. Um, I loved it. And I liked going darker because I'm a blonde. I feel best as a blonde. But the way, the color, I liked the color too. I I have to say, I was super into my makeover. But I would have done whatever they wanted. Like, it was kind of your chance to, like, if they wanted to, you know, give me the, the Sarah haircut, I would have totally loved it because you're kind of like, that's what they do for you. I don't know. They have, they have a vision for you and I kind of trusted it. Yeah. But no, I loved out. hair. 
it worked out for you amazingly, but for a lot of other girls, it didn't work out. Let them tell it. No. Was there anything that we did not see during the makeovers? No, I think it was pretty well displayed. I know Brandy was very upset with her makeover. I don't think Kenya liked her haircut either. I thought it was cute on her. Um, Michelle getting dyed blonde and shaking in the seat. Like we saw that, like, I mean, I couldn't imagine like your scalp burning off and no one cared. Oh my gosh. I think they were like, I think Mr. J came over cause his hair is like silver. Right. Hmm. And so he's been, he's been through like the whole like hair dyeing process a lot. And he's like, I know it hurts girl. And I think he came over and poured like seven up on her head to like neutralize the, I don't know. I don't know. I ooh, see, that's what I don't remember so well. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure to like help calm down, like her scalp burning, they they poured like seven up on her head or something. Michelle, I'm sorry if that's totally not the case, but that's what I remember. Yes, and we've spoken to Michelle. I love Michelle. Michelle is one of my personal, one of my Ooh. personal favorite chats with Michelle. She's so sweet. Yeah. She's so sweet, so sweet. Um, how was the what one eight hundred flowers with a dog and a man photo shoot for you? That was fun. I mean, dogs, come on. Like, I'm a dog lover. Like, and that was before I had my own dog. But that was so cute. And every single dog had their own handler to be like, hey, dog, look at me, look at me. So every dog was perfect in every photo. So there was a lot of people on set that day. It was fun. And they all had their own kennels. And we were outside. That was that was a fun day. And there, I think I saw a question. There were two male models that day. Because if there was one, he'd be having to work and be on set all day like that was too much you can't expect someone to do that that was a lot of work so there was two there was two men yes okay mm -hmm. next on the list is brandy <laughs> who i've like spoken to a thousand times and i'm trying so hard have to get you? her on the line yes i have her number i've texted her but you know is she good we we didn't get a chance to like talk on that level. It's really like okay. transactional communication. But hopefully, sure. I get a chance to like talk to her. We are um, friends on Facebook, and she she updates frequently. So okay. Well, I I I I hope nothing but the best for her. I know she's kind of been through some stuff, um, just from reading news and things. But mm -hmm. um, we never got we never got close. She was um. I feel like she was just angry about a lot of things that I didn't understand. And I just didn't want to jump into drama with people. So we never connected. I have nothing bad to say about Brandy. She, we were all going through a lot when we were on there. And so I, nothing but respect. I feel, I feel bad that she was um, eliminated early. I thought she was beautiful. Um, and I just wish her the best. Yes, it's so frustrating because all of Brandy's photos were amazing. They she were. looked amazing. But her attitude, at least the way it was presented to us, yeah. was not um friendly or like welcoming. And it's just like, dang it, if she just would have smiled a little bit more. But who's but who's to say like what her experiences were, what she was going through? Um, exactly. You know, do, you know, we don't know. Hopefully we get to discuss it. Cause I do feel like there may be a little bit more from her side that we may not know that. I know. guarantee there's a lot more that she could maybe explain and, mm -hmm. and I would love to hear it. But like, I didn't get that vibe from her. Like, Hey, let's be friends. Like, so it's like, we just didn't vibe. And so it was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to keep my time with people that I feel comfortable with. And I don't know. So. Brandy was funny as hell though. There was this moment. She was. <laughs> and I know the people who watched me do this. I've been doing this for almost two years, Rebecca. God damn. Um, yes, it's almost coming up on two years, guys. This August make two years cool. I've been doing the AT chats. Um, but there's this moment I always talk about when she's like when you guys are at that tennis challenge and she told yeah. somebody she was like, Girl, if I would get eliminated, I knock your it was it was so I would tow your ass up, right? Ah, exactly. yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> but who did she say that to? Do you remember? Rebecca, can you say it again for me, please? I'm going to tow your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't do it right. I don't do it justice. I'm just some stupid. I, I would have told <laughs> your ass up. Oh, my God. That was reality TV gold. That one little sound bite. Boom. I would have told good. your ass up. <laughs> she sounded like every aunt that I've ever met in my life. Oh my God. Okay, on to the next girl. 
Noelle. Okay. Noelle. She was young. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so oh. sorry. Um, okay. Let's talk about it. The, 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 the photo shoot during the week that um, Brandy got eliminated, which was the now infamous um, Got Milk racial identity, ethnicity oh. with the baby swap thing. How was that for you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. the oh, horse okay. Felt I feel like my mic went up. No, you're fine. Okay. Um, it was weird, right? It was. It was like you're asking us to do what exactly? Like switch races? Like I don't think anyone really felt comfortable with it, right? And this was a, this lit this was a different time. Like nowadays, that would never fly. That is pretty. That's pretty over the top, actually. Um, but then, you know, if you don't do what you're told next. So, um, there were some discussions between a, a bunch of the contestants. I remember the girls and feeling comfortable and not comfortable. And we're all kind of, I think the majority of us were like, well, we can't stand up and say no to this. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so you just kind of do what you're told and coming from Tyra, you know, if she thought it was okay, then maybe it's okay. I, I don't know. It was just a, this is what you do. Boom, boom, boom. And then we all did it. And now we can, I think we can all look back and go, you know what? I don't think that was appropriate. That should have, that should have mm -hmm. never happened, but that's what Tyro wanted us to do. So that's what we did. Did you, did you feel like it was appropriate <clears throat> or did, were you uncomfortable yourself? No, I was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, for sure. But it does that that doesn't matter. That does not matter. Because you know, because if you stand up and say no, like what happens like we saw it at, at the makeovers. Like if you don't like your makeover and you say no, I'm not comfortable with this, well then you get to go home. So it was kind of like just shut up and do it. Mm hmm Yeah. Um fast forward to twenty twenty two and you know. That that's not right. We know. Entirely. It's not all right. He knows. They know. They know. But you know what? Like, I've, I've talked about this a, a lot of times in other videos where, yeah. uh, like, with Cycle 13, it was they did another racial thing. And I remember being a kid watching Cycle 4 and watching Cycle 13. I didn't think nothing of it. And it honestly took one of the contestants from Cycle 13 to explain to me why it is <clears> incorrect. <throat> Which um, and I will give Jen her credit, credit Jen on, and she basically said, "You're basically saying that another race and ethnicity is a costume that you could just put it on and off, and it's like you're right. objectifying someone's culture, their likeness." I was like, "Oh yeah, that is kind of bad. Like that is bad." Um, but those type of discussions just weren't being had at that time. So no, and like that type of artistry was becoming like more popular on TV. Like these, these whole yeah body aesthetic yeah. prosthetic makeover type things so i can see where they kind of got lost in the sauce i don't think they meant by, bad by it but the damage is still done you know it is and i, I truly don't think anything bad i kind of feel like with the celebration of like a lot of different cultures mm -hmm. but it doesn't really play off that way mm -hmm. i mean that's kind of the way it was like given to us like mm -hmm. celebrating different cult which was i celebrate all of it but um but yeah it just eh, it didn't age well that was not good yeah Next on the list is Noelle. Her son. Noelle. Her son. She loved her son. My son. My son. She <laughs> was like 18 or 19. 19? She was young. I remember she was deathly afraid of sharks. If anyone even said the word shark, she would like freak out and like run away. <laughs> um, it was, she was she was sweet. I, I enjoyed my time with Noelle. I thought she was... Um, really kind she never said a bad thing about anyone in the house and yes she talked about her son a lot but she had a son that she had to leave for months to try to do something to better herself which at the time i didn't have a kid but i have two boys now and i don't know if i could have done that and i think she's strong as hell for leaving her kid to try to do something better for their future so go noel yeah. i haven't talked to her ever since the show um, so I don't know what she's doing or what she's up to now, but, um, but yeah, she was, she was sweet. Okay, friends, I need your help. 
because there was the alien photo shoot. Then Rebecca, don't you say anything? There was an alien photo shoot. There was a flowers photo shoot. There was the um, horoscope photo shoot, which Brandy mm -hmm. went on. And then there was the next photo shoot. My brain wants to tell me the gas station. But but Yuli went home on the gas station, right, y'all? I'm missing. Yeah. I've, I've deleted a photo shoot from my head. Somebody help me. I don't even remember. Um, oh, it, yeah, it was it, it was the got milk. Okay, there we go. There we go. It was the got milk. Thank you guys. Well, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. All right. Next on the list. Oh, how was the horoscope photo shoot for you? I'm all jumbled up right now, but I'm going to catch myself up. Horoscope. Well, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> I loved it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a Virgo, and I got to be Virgo. Um, they made me play the safe sex virgin. I don't know what Janice said, but um, I had fun. I was comfortable in that harness. I'm not scared of things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think my photo was probably better than the one they picked. But... Um, I had fun with that one. I liked that one. I really wanted it to be like a calendar. I thought that was the whole point. Like there was 12 girls, um, 12 signs. And that's what they told us. Like it was going to be turned into a calendar. And I was like, yeah, I want the, I want to, I want the calendar. Um, but that never happened. So I don't know. I thought that was kind of part of it, but maybe not. I might be <laughs> making stuff up in my head too. I don't know. That would have been so dope. That it would have been dope, so dope. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Next on the list is UV, who we've had a chance to speak to. I love UV. Mm -hmm. UV is, she's good people. She, I feel like she was like, um, she just had a way with every single person in the house. She could relate to, talk to, calm down, feel good about UV. She's beautiful. She's, she's so good. good people. She's one of the people that I, um, I've been around after the show. Um, yeah, she's got kids. She's in. She's doing well. I love UV. I love UV. Yes. Mm -hmm. How yep. was the photo shoot outside with all of the elements on the car, on the little truck at the gas station, the wind, the rain? I remember us all talking like, are we on Fear Factor here? Like, it was like... <laughs> It was like more and more like crazy stuff just thrown out to see what you deal with it. It was the water was ice cold. The wind was like 40 miles an hour. I'm probably making that up, but it was, it was like, like we were in a tornado and then they're like, go oh, look hot, do this, do that. And it was, it was a lot. We were in the desert, but we all came off the set, like shaking from the ice water. That was not fun. Oh no. Mm -mm. Next on. <laughs> Next on the list is Antium Deity, Tiffany Richardson. Tiffany. Bum, 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 bum. Tiffany. I want you to I want you to find Tiffany and interview her. She's um she's she's awesome. Um we went through a lot together. We got kicked off together. We got put in a hotel room together, you know, after the whole kickoff and sequestered part. Um we and I think it took us until like at the end, maybe that point to really connect, right? Because it's just in the house. She was hanging out with Brandy, and I was more like with Kaylin and just other groups. Like we kind of had, you know, just our people that we connected with. There was a lot of girls, and you can't be best friends with everybody. But we finally, I think, found our stride and like how we connected after we got kicked off. And oh, she's she's been through a lot with this whole Tyra thing in this moment, and that's. Just it's just a big moment, and I I really have respect for Tiffany. She also left behind her child to try to do these things to move on and be better in her life, and so she she put herself out there, and then just you know kind of just got thrown down by Tyra. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. some for you once we get out of um, real call and get into like questions okay. about Michael. Um, but is there anything else you want to add about Tiffany? <sighs> I mean, yes, I know. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't even know if I feel super comfortable about speaking too much about her experience because that was her experience. But I remember there was an interview like after we got kicked off and, and I don't like this part. And I, I remember saying, 
I think Tyra may be right about her giving up. But after you get put through all these challenges and cycles and they tell you this and tell and they beat you down and beat you down, at, at some point she's just like, well, okay, then if I'm not good enough, like, you know, then send me home. And, and that was a tough challenge for her. And I said that, and I don't like that I said that because I don't think that was, I don't think she just like gave up and wanted to do it. She wanted it bad, but it's, we all react differently to the pressure that we're under. Um, every single one of us reacted differently. And, and she just took the brunt of all of it for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was that um, Wonder Bra photo shoot? Pillow fight with a male model. Some of the comments were like, um, we're asking, and I'll ask it now that you look visibly upset mm -hmm. um, that it didn't look like you were enjoying that photo shoot. What, what's the yeah. insight behind that? Oh, <laughs> mama got to readjust her seat. I got to get comfortable here. Um, no, that was, a, that, was a, that was a bad day for me. That was a really bad day for me. Um, so there's some things that happen behind the scenes that nobody really knows about. And, um, and I kind of want to set the record straight because I was labeled this. I had my story. I was just the girl that was getting married and she just didn't feel comfortable shooting with a male model, which he was creepy, by the way. He would like whisper gross stuff in your ear on set to all the girls. I'm just saying. Um, it was not comfortable with him. Um, but that's besides the point. That's something else. Um, so what had made, okay. I'm a little emotional about this. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. Um, so the day we did the photo shoot, the gas station photo shoot, um, long day, came home. We were all at the house and like, we all took turns cause like the confessional room was also the phone room. So it was always busy. You had to wait your turn. And everybody always wanted to come home and call their person and just um, just have a little bit of like support and love, right? To get that from your person at home. We had like two or three people we could put on a list that we could call and it was recorded and they could play whatever. Um, but I came home that day and I called my fiance, Todd, and I got very bad news. Um, a very close family member was in a very very awful tragic accident that night and didn't know didn't know the out what the outcome could have possibly been and at that moment when i literally heard the news and i am sobbing i don't even know what's going on the doors rip open camera crews run in and they're like right into my face and i'm getting news i don't know how to handle this i can't believe it's true it was just so overwhelming and these people jump in I think people have talked about the survivor camera guy, like, whoosh, like in your face. Um, and then I think, I don't, I don't know what exactly had happened, but maybe some of the girls walking by, cause it was like in the middle of the house, kind of caught wind of me, like losing my mind and the cameras, like you can see people running through the house. Like if, if camera crews are like running, something's happening, right? Girl, we, we know what's going on. It wasn't that big. And I remember, um, my head was spinning. And so Kaylin and the other girls, but I couldn't tell you who came in, threw a blanket over my head, covered up my microphone and like rushed me out of that room so they could stop filming me. And, um, cause I was, I was about to leave. I was going to go home because nothing is more important than my family at this point. And I didn't know what was going on. And so then I got pulled outside by some of the producers, Ken, Larry, um, Anthony, and they assured me, like, look, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, this isn't, this isn't your story. This isn't who your brand is on the show. And we're, we're not going to air this. And I was very thankful, but I just said, look, like I'm, I want to go. And they said, just give us some time, give us some time. And then I was able to keep talking to my fiance Todd to kind of get updates. And it was, it was nuts. It was very emotional. And then I had to go to that stupid wonder bra shoot and jump on top of some random dude. Like that didn't feel good when like my heart is sick and broken. Right. It was bad. It was really bad, but I do respect them for not putting that out there and just making me look like I was the Midwestern girl that didn't want to, you know, do something against her husband. I appreciate that. And I, and I'm okay with that. Like, being who I was for so long, but um, 
and they made me go last. They made, I feel like they made me think about it all day. And then I had to like, you know, like you just want to get something over with. And then I was like one of the last ones to go. And then he was kind of gross. And then I had to mentally deal with that. And that was really hard. That was, that was a bad day. First of all, thank you so much. Everyone breathe. Everyone. <laughs> first of all, I want it's kind of nuts. I, first of all, I want to thank you so much for sharing that um, emotional yeah. moment with me and my friends here. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. <laughs> I do want to ask you some questions. Um, do, do you need some time? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank okay, you. perfect. So I want to know, did you verbalize to anyone on production the struggles that you were going through that day that potentially could have impeded on your performance in the photo shoot? Well, they knew. I mean, everyone in production knew. I don't know how much all of the girls knew what was going on, uh, but production knew. They knew. And so once you got the news and like you just shared with us, you wanted to go, was this something that you told production like, hey, I want to go home and be with my family? Yeah. Yep. And they said, give us some time. Because if I just disappeared, how would they explain that without airing anything else? I don't know. Um, they said, just give us some time. And I trusted them. And I said, OK. Um, and then double elimination. OK. Which then, which you don't have to get into it because we're going to get into it a whole lot later, but I will ask this question right. now. Do you, is the double elimination the answer to getting you home? I don't know. Maybe. It was never talked about. Okay. And but then, I, was, I was okay with it. Okay. Thankful. And then my last question is, in hindsight. Yeah. From your vantage point, do you believe that the production did everything that they could do to make you feel comfortable during that time? Do you feel slighted in any way or feel like they could have done something better? What's your reflection on that? Sorry, it was kind of glitchy there. During the Wonder Bra photo shoot? Yeah, so like from like, once, you, once they became aware yeah. of what you were going through and what yeah. you wanted to do for yourself, do you feel like they moved respectfully um, with you and handled, ha handled you with care, basically? Do you feel like they handled you with care? Not really. Just because nothing was ever really talked about again. Um, granted, that photo shoot was already set up before right. any of this happened, right? So it just played out in a really crummy way. Um, they... I don't know. I don't, I sometimes, sometimes I was, it was in a very traumatic state of mind. Sometimes I don't remember everything. I don't know. They, they were very reassuring the first day or so and just said, you know, just stick around. Well, we got you. And I was like, okay, I trusted them. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what else they could have done. I don't know what I needed. I don't know a lot of stuff. So. Yeah. Okay. And then the last question before we jump back into a and team roll call is... <laughs> yeah, we're still in roll call. <laughs> yeah, you're still in roll call, but this is why everyone loves roll call because we get into the things, other things, um, and we just, we just get into it just, you know, just off the whim. I want to know, did you express your discomfort with what the male model was singing in your ear with anyone in power on set? No. No, it was more of a conversation among girls. Like, hey, I just got upset and this, he kind of this or whatever. So, no, uh uh. Um, it was another one of those just kind of like, it is what it is, move on, do it, get it done. And I didn't want to cause any more trouble or drama or this. I just wanted to get past it, kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next on the list is Tatiana. Tatiana, she was so sweet. She was just this cute little hippie Hawaiian girl. She was young. I think we, I think she was in the bed next to me. Um, she was gorgeous. She was fun. I like Tati. We call her Tati for short, I think. Um, yeah, she was sweet. Were you a decoy for any other photo shoots after you left the competition? No, because they sent me home. They were supposed to keep me until the end of the whole cycle. Um, but granted everything that had happened, they, you know, once me and Tiffany were like kicked off into the hotel room, um, 
production assistants or somebody, I don't even know if like any of the producers came up, but they said, you know, normally we're, we would hang on to you for like another month. So we send everybody home as a group. So then it doesn't like, oh, like you came home after three weeks. Well, you didn't win. Like they, they, don't, they need to keep this a secret. Mm -hmm. um, but I will always be thankful that they put me in a hotel. I was there for a day or two. And then they said, look, we, we know you got to go home. So we're, we're, we're sending you home. So no, I was no, I was no decoy. I was no part of anything. I, I booked it. Okay. Um, do you think, do you think if that incident hadn't happened and the conversations between you and production hadn't happened, do you think you would have stayed past the Warner Bra photo shoot? I don't even care. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I maybe that know. was the way it's supposed to go. I really, it, it all happens for a reason. And so I will never look back and be like, well, no, I was where I needed to be when I needed to be there. And so I'm good with it. I never went back and thought any of that. Mm -mm. Yes, I love that answer. I love that. Next uh -huh. list is Michelle. Michelle. She was sweet. We never really bonded so much in the house. But she, um, she was interesting. She was like someone I'd never really met before. Um, she was kind of, she was going through a lot, I think, in her life. Um, but, and I felt so bad for her with the whole skin thing. Like, if that was me, I would have been like in tears and sad. Like, you're judged on all of that. And here she is, she had no control over that. And then, you know, that was like a big part of her story. And I just, my heart broke for her. That's, that was, shitty timing <laughs> i mean she was kind she was sweet she was young and um yeah she was she was a good kid what was your reaction during that time when she was allegedly walking around with a flesh-eating bacteria and all the, what was your reaction we didn't know anything like, we literally are kept from anything in the news and i remember um Someone called home and was like, is there something going on? Yeah, there's this flesh eating disease going around. And that is the only, like, source we had for it. So, like, I don't I remember, I uh oh like Sorry, Rebecca, <laughs> you're going in and out. If you can hear me, I don't, I don't want uh -oh. to. Tyra, we bind you. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So, I asked a question. Like, do you this Oh, yeah. And that happened on TV, but he's like, no, Becca, I'm kidding. Of course, I haven't heard of anything stupid like this. But they didn't put that part on. They just put the whatever clip on. And so, I don't know. It was, that would have been really crappy to have that happen to you <laughs> on your big break on national TV. Like, God bless her. Mm -mm. Yes, and Tiffany's grandmother told all y'all, go read a book. Go read a book. <laughs> no. Go read a Tiffany's book. Tiffany's grandma was awesome, by the way. She had a lot of good things to say. Yeah. Good advice. Tiffany's grandmother. Next on the list is Christina Murphy, a.k.a. the Ice Queen, according to Tyra. Mm. She she was sweet. Did I think she came off as a little cold or whatever sometimes, but... We'd have some conversations. I just think maybe she was a little insecure. And I'm really sorry if this is totally way off base, Christina, if you're watching this. But um, I think I think she just kind of had to close herself off a little bit because she sometimes needs reassurance or different things. But no, I got along great with Christina. I thought she was, she was nice, too. Next on the list is Kenya Hill. Kenya Hill. I think she's crushing it, by the way, still. I think she's I think she's still doing awesome, right? Kenya is killing it still. <laughs> Good for you, Kenya. Yeah, we just never connected. She she and I really didn't have much in common. We weren't really, I think, open to each other's friendship um at the time, just because there was so much going on. Um, no beef with her. I think there was one time we had like a little argument. It never aired. I don't even know what it was about, but um you we and just, Kenya we were arguing? Close. Not even really arguing. Just like something happened and it was a couple words back and forth, which for me was a lot because I stayed out of all of it. Like, I remember Kaylin and I, <laughs> drama would start and we'd go, oh, and we'd hold hands and we'd run around the curtain or run away because we didn't want to be part of any of it. Like, 
I hated the drama. That was just not my shtick. It's still not my, like, I hate confrontation. I hate all of that. So, um, yeah, we would just go away, but we just never connected, me and Kenya. And wish her nothing but the best, because she's she's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And she's getting married. Mm-hmm. Too. Is she? Getting married. Oh, it's good. I love that. Next on the list is Kaylin. I mean, I mean, girl's awesome. We... She actually just moved to Minnesota. She is a local girl. She would make fun of my Minnesota accent, but now she lives here with her cute boyfriend. Um, I don't see her as much as I want to just because my life is so nuts with kids and work and running around every day. But Kaylin is one in a million. She was my girl in the house. She is was my everything. She had my back. I would have her back. Um, she's just funny as hell. I don't know. I love Kaylin. She's can't say enough good things. Yes. And last but not yep. least, of the girls, the winner of Cycle 4, Naima. Naima. She just has like this kind soul about her that she she could she could also just be with anybody in any situation and and look good and do it effortlessly. And I knew she was one to watch at the end. I just I knew it. I just had this gut feeling. Um I can't put my finger, I can't, I don't have words. There's something very unique about Naima. And I've seen her, like, I took my kids out to New York two years ago, pre-pandemic. I got to hang out with her and, like, she's just, she's the same. Like, she was the same person on camera as off camera today, like, 20 years later. Um, She's, she's cool. She's, I wish I could be more like her in her artistic ways. She's, she's beautiful. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, next up on the list is Miss J. Alexander, Diva Runway Coach Extraordinaire. I liked him. He thought I had a good walk, so I actually super liked him. No, mm-hmm. I'm kidding. Um, but he was he was one of the guys that would um hang out on set after the camera stopped rolling and hang out and talk, whatever. I remember after like our first topless photo shoot, um he was just there. Like he could have gone home and gone to bed and done his thing, but he would just stay and chill and talk to us. And it was just super real down to earth. I, I loved him. And, and runway was like my favorite. So I kind of, I really wanted to like hear what he had to say and, and be around him as much as I could. I, I like his day. Do you still have a dope runway walk? Girl. No, I don't know. <laughs> Can we see? A little while. Can we see? No, because okay. I'm in my bedroom and I didn't make my bed. Oh, I got you. I got you. All right, that's fair. That's fair. And I'm, I am in bare feet, so no. I, I love. Thank you for asking me, but mm. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Next on the list is Mr. J. Manuel. Um, Mr. J. He he was like the link between Tyra and us cast members, right? Like. He was around a lot. He would do the introductions. He would do this, and he was outspoken, and he would hang out a little bit. Um, never got to be super buddy buddy with him. Um, always respected him. He was always super nice and just kind of like a. Um, he was there to give you a talk if you needed to like get pumped up or whatever. And he was good. I liked Mr. J, but or yeah, Mr. J, but never got close to him. I never felt like understood. I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next on the list is Nole Marin. Call the police! <laughs> no I way. wish I could have heard that real, but I was not. You were preoccupied. So. <laughs> I was. I was somewhere else. Yeah, you were somewhere uh, no, else. Nole actually hooked us up after the show. Um, Kayla lived in New York, and we all wanted to go out and meet the agencies. And so I think UV me. Uh, Kenyon was there for like a day or two. Anyway, so Nole was awesome. And he like made phone calls and he's like, I'm going to get you girls like in. Cause otherwise it's just like an open call process in New York. Like you just show up with like hundreds of girls to like be seen. He put effort in and we hung out with him one night and went around. Um, and he put phone calls in to places to get us, you know, what do you want to say? Audition, casting, whatever with agencies. Um, and he apologized for like him saying like things that were like not the kindest. He was awesome after the show. Nothing but mad respect. And I actually ended up signing with um, an agency that he was friends with the owner of Lana Winters of VNY. 
they were friends and he thought that I would be a good fit. He set that up for me and he followed oh, nice. through. He, he was, he was awesome. And then we kind of lost touch, which bums me out. But, um, no, he, he helped me the most after the show, hands down by far. Very Thank grateful. So much. I told you guys that it is different that we are on YouTube live. So I can't see the comments as I'm looking at Rebecca. I'm having to like, just put my, my face down and computer every now and then. I'm looking at the comments and I am so embarrassed and I apologize that I forgot a contestant that is actually near and dear to my heart. I forgot to ask you about Britney. Oh my God. Who could forget? Like, how do we forget Britney? That's oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, Britney. Oh my God. Okay. The first word that comes to mind with Britney is share. She had the most amazing share impression. And she would just come oh. out and sing and dance. Oh, she just nailed it like the low voice. She was an entertainer. She was fun. I think it came across as like me judging her, but I would just sit in awe. Like I'm not her. I can't do that. And she could just pull it out and be amazing. She's great. We're, um, we're friends on Facebook now. And she, I think she's got two little boys. She's in the whole like mommy hood. She looks stupidly beautiful. Like, wow. Um, yeah, we, it's just, she was, she was just pure entertainment. When we didn't have TV, we got Brittany. <laughs> yes yes i'm so sorry i'm so sorry <clears throat> thank you guys for your help i appreciate you guys i'm looking down here i see y'all in the comments it's over 400 people watching us i appreciate y'all next thank on you. the list is janice dickinson what do you say about janice i already kind of went into it a little bit but um but she's just crazy like when the, we were on panel and we were all in like the judging room the cameras would shit off and she'd just go Caca. And she just like <laughs> she would just like make noises so we would laugh just to break the tension because she knew we were all like shaking and nervous and she would just say like the most random stuff to break the ice. I don't know. I appreciated it. She was just funny. I don't know. I wish I got to know her more, but she was good. Next on the list is Nigel Barker. Nigel. Um, I'm appreciative to Nigel. He actually invited me out to New York to do some photo shoots for his book. He put together a book. I don't remember what it's called or what, whatever, but um, some of the past contestants he flew out and had some good chats with Nigel. And I, and he, I think he kind of apologized to you, like for, you know, they all have to say stuff that's a little bit um, not nice, over the top for TV. And, um, but he invited me out to be a part of his project. And I thought that was super cool. And I, I think he's a great photographer. He's been nothing but, awesome after the show like it's like once the cameras are off and you're not this 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 you get to be real people and like be like all right cool we all have, we all respect each other and last but certainly not least miss tyra lynn banks hmm. i wish i wish she was around more I wish it was the feet, like the warm, fuzzy feeling of like the interviews with the girls, like it puts out on TV, like she cares, she's Mama Tyra, she's this, she's this, but it just wasn't that feeling in the house. Uh, it was more um, business, which it's business. <laughs> there goes my AirPod. No, um, which I understand. I mean, at that time, I think it's come out like she was starting her talk show. So she, I think she was working like, I don't know how many hours a day. We were working a lot. She was working twice that much. I don't know how she does it. I completely respect all of that part of her. Um, she wanted to do it, like her brand was just growing. I wanted, I wanted more. I wanted more from Tyra. But I will say, when I had my wonderful moment, I, I opened my eyes, and the first thing I see is Tyra Banks in my face. She was the one that was closest to me and and I woke up and then I didn't know what was going on, right? Like we can get more into this too, but like, so it all happened so fast. And then I wake up and the first thing I see is Tyra Banks's face. Like you, it's like, am I waking up? Am I in a dream? Like what's going on? It's like waking up in a hotel room in the middle of the night and you're like, where am I, right? Tyra Banks is in my face. And then I hyper, I think I was hyperventilating. That's what they told me afterwards. Cause I couldn't move my arms. Like I had, no feeling like nothing works in my body. I couldn't move. 
And then I started crying. And so Tyra is literally dabbing tears from my eyes, like holding me and saying, you're okay, you're okay. And so I really can't say anything bad about Tyra because she, I wanted more for her from her for like other situations, but she ran and she was it. She was there for me. That was really cool. That was really special. Like cameras, I don't know what they were catching or not catching at that point. I really have no idea. But she she was kneeling next to me, holding me and, and wiping the tears from my face. Shout out to Tyra. Was, shout out to Tyra. Yep. All right, everybody. Let's take in a deep breath because we are officially done with a and roll call. <laughs> Rebecca, you that was like the call. long, was that the longest roll call you've ever had? No, I don't <laughs> think so. I've listened. Okay. Roll call will, can go sometimes, but um, I think I did it honestly one time randomly with a contestant and then the people who yeah. watched me during these interviews, like you need to do this every interview. And so it's just become a staple. It's a really good, um, it's a really good way to get uh, things I probably wouldn't think to ask you. And it sparks, wait, Tyra be behind you. Tyra be behind you. Get the fuck about my life, bitch. <laughs> oh, she's back. All right. Kidding. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do the robot and free trick. Yes. I'm like, Tyra, I don't got time for you now. Boom, girl. Boom. I know you be watching. Y'all know Tyra. Y'all do. Listen, I've been. Mm, uh -uh. Tyra does watch. Does Tyra her. watch these? Does she so watch I've been these? told from a very reliable, credible source mm -hmm. that Tyra watches all of these. And all I gotta say, Tyra, is call me girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can call me too, Tyra, if you want to hang out and chat. I think she's call my mom and like every call me, call me, let's chat. I got some Call me for again, you. Tyra. Listen, you know, girl, hey, I got my COVID vaccination. You know, girl, I'm just saying. <laughs> I know what you're doing, so I'm just saying. But anyways, let's get to these fan questions that were submitted via Instagram and YouTube. So here we go. Shout out to y'all who are watching. So the first question is from Gap0710, and they're saying, Rebecca... Okay, we already asked you that. Actually, about cycle two, and you said you think you saw Yuana, you think you saw Shandy. Shout out to you, Gap 0710. Um, you answered the question about Sarah. No one knows where Sarah is. Uh, okay, so this is from Steph Dog Redhead saying, "Hey Rebecca, how did you feel about the challenge where you were shooting tennis shots while being given a hard time by the client who turned out to be an actor?" I would have told your ass up. Oh, that is, that is, yeah, that, that was the feeling, but that was not vocalized. Um, no, you're just like, what the hell? Like, like, once again, like we all thought, like, is this fear factor? Like, what are we supposed to do here? Like, it just kept getting crazier and crazier. I kind of, at the end of it, knew something was up. Like, this is not real. And so I just tried to keep calm and I just kind of did my thing. And like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, that's fine. But I'm not going to react. I'm totally not going to react to this guy. So Nothing crazy. Okay. The next question is from um Koki Sekosi. When you won the Kmart challenge, you chose to share your prize of Stuart Weitzman's shoes with UV, Naima, Noel, Kaylin, and Sarah. How jealous were the other girls? I don't know. I'm not the other girls, but I know there was definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but they do that to you. See, this is the show. They let you pick certain people and then they make the other people you didn't pick serve you. Like, do you think that's gonna go well? No, of course it's not. And I that is the only episode that I was actually unhappy with the editing on that one. Um, I picked the other girls. They were kind of my roommates. Obviously I'm gonna pick Kaylin cause she's like my girl. And then Naima, cause she was second place. Like she rocked it. So like, yeah, girl, you deserve something. Let's go. And then they made it, um, the other girls serve us. And um, this is where me and Tiffany, I think, got off on the wrong foot. Because she was the one that was supposed to, like, help me or whatever. It was super uncomfortable. She kept, do you want anything? Do you want anything? Do you want anything? And it was, like, over and over. And I was just like, no, 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 no. I don't. Like, I'm good. It was awkward to begin with. And then finally, at the end, I was like, fine. Yes, I do. Go, whatever. Just please leave. But the way they, like, spun it and edited it looked kind of 
bitchy and like not nice. And I didn't, I didn't like that very much. So it was just a weird day, but I still have the shoes. They were my wedding shoes. They were your wedding shoes. So Stuart was there and he, I told him that I was looking for shoes for my wedding. Cause I, they're fancy shoes. I don't wear fancy shoes. I'm a jeans and t-shirt and like flip flops girl. And so I knew like, if I'm going to get some like cool ass designer shoes, like they're going to be for something special. And we knew we were going to get married, just didn't know when. And so he helped me go around and like pick up like pretty shoes. And then I don't think it was on camera. He pulled me aside and he's like, Hey, whatever you pick out, leave them here. And I will on the, on the bottom, on the sole, I will engrave for you. Um, one shoe was, um, a red heart the Swarovski. Did I say that right? Swarovski crystals. Um, and in it, it was B plus T for Becca plus Todd. And the other shoe was my wedding date. So once I knew my wedding date, he said, call me and I will put those on the shoes and I will send them to you. And see, he did. And those are my wedding shoes. And I have like a picture of like Todd holding my foot <laughs> in my wedding album, of like the shoes. It was cool. It was awesome. That is gorgeous. Yeah. And who does that? I don't know, but that was, that was special. Oh, that is special. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... This is from King Lex 46. I definitely think you had a way better photo at the last photo shoot. Do you wish you would have gotten a different makeover? Wait, what's different makeover or the last photo shoot? I'm kind of confused. I think he just wanted, I think he, it was a comment than a question. So he's saying he definitely okay. had a better photo from the last photo shoot. Oh, the okay. The question is, do you wish you would have gotten a different makeover? No, I loved it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You had a great I, makeover. I'm, I'm, I, I think didn't one of the judges even come out and say that they didn't choose the best photos? Wasn't that like now fact from one of the judges or no? Yes. Thank you. Right. Nigel Parker. Uh -huh. Thank you. In right. his interview with me confirmed mm -hmm. that the best photos were not always picked. And I'm so sorry for no. my. But you know, a lot of you know, I, uh, Rebecca. I don't like to in my own heart. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't, <laughs> like it. I don't like it. But a lot of times, and I'm gonna have a five second care. I see a lot of bitches on the internet doing, you know, and it's you know. Thank God I don't do this to honestly be recognized. I really don't. It's really just fun for me to talk to you all about a show that I absolutely love. But then when I see sometimes the trophies getting passed out, I'm like, wait, hold on. But you know what? I don't never say anything. I just sit quietly because I know the God that I serve will always make room for me. So when y'all see me on the reboot sitting on the judge's table, ha, 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 ha. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're doing the Lord's work, aren't you? <laughs> I appreciate it. You honestly. are. You are. You are literally getting to the bottom of all of this stuff that I think it just takes time for people to like want to talk about. You're you're crushing it. This is awesome. No, yeah. I mean it's only possible. By you should toot it. You should toot it's, your own horn. It's sometimes. only possible because of you guys. So I always thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to to do this because it's really you guys. Yeah. Really you guys. Anyways, going back to these fan questions. This is from um, Zavi dot JV saying. How are you feeling when Tyra said, after you fell, uh -huh. who was scared? I know I was. Well, I had to watch it on TV. I never knew any of that happened. Mm -hmm. um, right. It was just a quick moment. I don't know. I mean, I think I think the kind of reaction of everyone was like, what the hell just happened? Um, kind of scared. I don't know. Mm. Ray <laughs> what else does she say to the girls? I don't know. Raymundo wants to know, is there anything about the room where they shot the elimination that contributed to your collapse? No. Um, so there's, I think there's been a lot of debate about this. Like some people are like, oh, she needs to eat a sandwich or whatever. Like, no. Um, I developed this heart condition when I was three. Um, and I used to, it used to happen a lot when I was a kid, like a lot. Like I remember in like sixth or seventh grade, I collapsed in the middle of a basketball court in the middle of the basketball game. Like the most random situations that happen all the time. It's not life threatening. Like it's just very, like really what it is, is it's low blood pressure. So all of a sudden my heart can't pump blood to my brain. So it all just shuts off for a minute and then I, and I fall over. 
and it's more of a childhood thing. So you kind of grow out of it. So I did grow out of it. Um, but it was just that perfect moment. And I will say that we were, we were in that, ju- like the judging room, you're there for hours and you're in four inch heels and your knees are locked. And that's not the best. You're not moving. You're not eating. You're not drinking. You're just standing like this forever and just taking it and taking it and taking it. And I, I, I can't say what triggered it. I really can't. I think all those things contributed to it. Um, but it was just perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Immortalized yeah. in the Museum of America's Next Top Model. I mean, it really is. It, well, I'm a gif, whatever. Like, it's out there. Um, but I'll never forget. So I have two boys. And a year ago, my youngest one comes home from school one day. He's 11, so I think he was 10. He comes home from school and he goes, Mom, is this you? <laughs> it was like, a, it was a TikTok. Because my kids on TikTok. And I was like, what? And he's like, that, that's not you, is it? And it was the, you know, the, the quick little gif of me falling. And I'm like, well, yeah. He's like, what? He was like, his mind was blown. Like, he couldn't believe that his mom, first of all, like, his mom is just his mom. And then she shows up on his TikTok in a really traumatic, like, way. And so then we had that little conversation. But, yeah, it was crazy. So what was the what was the like behind the scenes care like for you once you had that moment in panel well first of all i want to apologize to all the girls because i i knew i was fine i did not in an ambulance i just had to wake up and like just be fine but that doesn't fly on a set when you're like under contract so the ambulance came emergency room came like all of that um they let me use a cell phone so I could call Todd, my fiance, and explain. I think someone called him and he got really upset and really worried because he didn't know what was going on. And so then I think I was able to talk to him on the phone and like tell him I was okay. Um, but I'm like, just get me out of here. Like, I, I don't need to be here. You can't do anything for me at this point. Like, I know my body. I've been through so much testing from cardiologists and neurologists my whole life. Like, I got this now, right? I know, I finally know what's going on. So then they let me go from the hospital and um, I didn't get back until like two or three o'clock in the morning. And then we had to resume (laughs) panel at that time. I think most of the girls fell asleep. Like, I don't know what time of night it happened, but I was gone for hours because even the emergency room is not fast. Um, So I was gone for hours and then I finally came back and to stay on schedule for production, we had to finish that judging that night. We had to. So I don't think we got done until like, four or five in the morning, five in the morning. And, and I felt so bad because then none of the girls all got like two hours of sleep for like another long day. And, and I just, that just sucked. That was bad. Yeah. Oh, was wow. Bad. Yeah. But also I will say this. I'm listening. They all, they all had to get up the next morning and I think it aired. There was like this ballet lesson with that teacher that would like whack girls with a stick. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I think so. Yeah. So it was like a very short clip. Um, and they would not let me go. They made sure, like they said, if you want to carry on this competition, you have to be checked up by a doctor. Like I guess the emergency room wasn't enough. So they chose a top cardiologist in Beverly Hills for me to go talk to. I had to go see him and he prescribed me pills that I'd already been on that didn't work, but none of that mattered. He prescribed these pills and I had to take them. And then I got stuck with the bill because they didn't cover any expenses that were not. So I got the, I got the ambulance bill. I got the emergency room bill. I got Dr. Joe, blah, blah, blah. And Beverly Hills bill. I was in debt thousands and thousands of dollars because of this. And I had to do it if I wanted to keep going. Right. And I had to take pills that I didn't, I knew that were not good for me. I was not okay. I was, I was upset about that too. And then I show up to that dancer guy and he's whacking me and I am in so much pain from falling on my shoulder. And my head. You like, I was like, back up. I was I'm like, I'm going to tow your ass up if you hit me. Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Did you, Luckily, pay, did you pay, did you pay all of that back? 
my husband is amazing and he helped me because I wasn't working during all of that time. How, and so he supported me and it took a long time to pay it off. How much, how much you think the, the dollar amount was? I don't remember. Probably, I want to say between like seven to $9,000. Yeah. Something like that. Jesus. Uh-huh. And I feel like they made so much money off of that clip. Like that clip is everywhere. Like, can't you just like, like, help me out? That that sucked. Did you ask them for help? No, because they wouldn't. It's in my contract. They are not responsible for any of that. Mm -mm. Damn, it didn't matter. Mm -mm. Rashi DH eighty one is asking: Do you ever find yourself saying, "If you want to go, just go," in a coffee <laughs> No, but my oldest son is so good at accents is ridiculous. And so my little one, he can do British pretty well. And I do think of that every now and then when they like do their British accents, because they were into Thomas the train when they were little. And so he would always have some British accent. And, uh -huh. and that would, I'd always like kind of take me back a little bit, but they wouldn't understand. But it, I always think of that. And that makes me laugh inside because it was so bad. It was, it was bad. bad. It was bad. bad from everybody. Why the hell do we need to have a British accent if we're in a modeling competition? Tell me that. Why the hell would that matter? Right? It Am I crazy? No, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah. Um, okay, girl. So we're at the moment. Let's talk about it. You are the unofficial official third member of one of the mo most iconic moments ever on reality TV, and that still lives at the top tier of pop culture relevance. We were rooting for you! <laughs> we were all rooting for you! <laughs> for the first time in top model history, I want to know, Rebecca, what was your experience like in that moment? Well... I was flooded with a thousand different emotions that night, right? Because I wanted to go home. I got to go home. This whole double lynch, like, what does this white paper mean, Dyer? Like, what are you, like, flipping? Like, there's nothing there. What does this mean? And then you're sad because you don't want to, like, you don't want to get eliminated. You want to win. You got eliminated. And then, and then we go to say goodbye. And, like, everyone reacts differently to getting kicked off of a show that you really wanted to be a part of. And Tiffany was like, it's okay. It's okay. You know, she's trying to make everyone else feel comfortable. She's sacrificing, I think, her emotions to make other people feel okay. Because everybody was sad she was going home. Everyone loved Tiffany. Mm -hmm. She was awesome. And then she, we both get called back and Tyra just goes off on her. And I'm telling you, they you only saw, like, I don't know how long the clip was. A few minutes of, like, a very, very long tirade. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> But she kept going and going, and I don't even remember everything she said because the clip is so ingrained in my head now. So I've seen it how many times, right? That that's what I remember now because it's like I'm conditioned to remember just that part. There was a lot more she said, and it just didn't seem to end. And poor Tiffany just – she just had to stand there and take it. And it was it was over the top. It was over the top. But I, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm going home. I'm gonna go. I need. I need. I need to be somewhere else. I get to go. So I was like happy and sad, and then like, what the hell? Like all of this stuff at the same time. It was that was a crazy night, actually. There's been reports of, and I've read these on my two eyes of um, Tyra telling Tiffany something. Excuse me, I've been drinking um, Kim Crawford. I'm sorry, <laughs> um, but something to the effect of saying Tiffany. Um, could go back home and sleep on the mattress with her, with her, with her child. Um, yeah, I think she said that. I do. I do think she said that, and that is like just digging it hard. I didn't like that. I, I'm a. I'm gonna say I'm like eighty seven percent sure she said that. Can't claim a hundred, but I, I think that happened. Yeah. But, you, come on. Do you feel that like good. antagonized? little bit they prey on your insecurities they know everyone's story is this and this and this and um yeah i think a little bit for sure do you think tyra really 
cared about Tiffany? Let let me rephrase. Do you think Tyra in that moment was coming from a place of wanting to embarrass her? Or do you think Tyra was coming from a place of this mentorship, motherly, like you really could have won this. We really wanted this for you. And I'm Tyra. I don't feel like you did it the right way. Um, I'm not in Tyra's, I don't know, but to me, it came across as a woman who is completely overworked and just snapped. Like, as a mom, I know, like, when you take so much and so much and so much, and all of a sudden that moment hits and you're like, Pff, whether it's warranted or not, um, mm -hmm. I think Tyra just snapped because she was burning the candle at both ends. I give her credit. She works her butt off. And I think that played a part into it personally. And then there's the whole, well, we, we need drama for reality TV. So that worked out well. Um, and I do think she, I mean, Tyra's a human being. She's a person. She cares. She does care. I know she cares at the end of the day. I truly believe she cares. I'm going to see the best in everybody. And I do think she cares about people. And I think it came off the wrong way. I think it came off way too strong. She could have said it in a much better way, but that's what happened. Cause she just like lost it. And I think. I don't know. What were, what was Tiffany saying from what you can remember after you guys left out of the judging room? Like, what would, what were the conversations from Tiffany, from the producers? What was going on? There wasn't really conversations with me and Tiffany. It was, hey, get your butt out of here because you have to go pack your bags. All the girls, when you get kicked off the show, um, the well, the girl, but for us, the girls, we have to go pack all of our stuff. And the girl, the other um, people that stayed and made it through, they have to sit in the judging room for another hour after judging is over because they can't go back into the house and interact with you. Because when you get kicked off, they want your exit interview. So while you're packing, they're asking you questions and you have to say this and this. So Tiffany's in a whole other bedroom. I'm in the bedroom over here. We're both packing up our stuff. So we didn't speak to each other during that whole thing. Um, and then they brought us to the hotel and then we roomed together. And I think we were, we just went to bed. I think we just zonked out because it was too much to handle. So. Have you spoken to her since then? I think I got her phone number when we were in the hotel. I remember calling her one day just to check up on her and see how she was doing. But that was before social media. Like it wasn't a way to connect with people. Like um and i still don't like social media very much but um so no it was it was difficult to stay in touch with the girls i wish i wish i could have done a better job with that because it's like we're all survivors of this crazy world we were a part of and we were who we were on the show but like we all made it through we all did it mm -hmm. in a way and like we all have this common bond and i find that common bond with like girls i've met from other cycles of other events or things we've gone to like it's kind of like this like sisterhood of like you survived too. Look, you're still, you're still like out there doing it. Like it's like this thing to me, to me, that's how it is. Um, so I, I wish I could have kept in better contact because I, I think she's cool as hell. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've, I've worked in, I've worked on at least someone who went to high school with her and really? yeah, yeah. He's a big YouTuber. His name is oh. Funky Dani, but he's like, have like over 300,000 subscribers. He's been on TV. He's over there at Fox Soul right now. And yeah. he even said that Tiffany amongst like the people that like grew up with her, know her, no one yeah. really, at least it was like a year ago, maybe over a year ago. He's like, no one really knows what she's doing or where she is right now. Now I did find her grandmother. Yeah. I'll, I will say this. I did find her grandmother on Facebook and I never went back to see if she read my message. Okay. Um, but hopefully one day mm. the ANTM gods will smile upon us and we'll talk to Tiffany. I mean, I never thought I would talk to you, but you're here, so maybe Tiffany will come eventually. We would love to have her. We all know that crazy things are happening in the world right now, so it's very possible. Just put the energy out there and she could come. Yeah. Um, you've done a great job of answering all these other questions, such as did you go to Africa? Were you a decoy? How was your time being sequestered? Did you marry your fiance? There's one more question a lot of people wanted to know, and I'm going to give it to you. It's Dave O'Leary. In cycle eight, you returned for a photo shoot and were paired up with JL. Rest in peace. Yeah. What are your yeah. memories of her, and how was it being back on Top Model four cycles later? Love from the UK. Love back to the UK. Um, 
honestly. So like, um, I don't even know how it went about. Went out there for a couple days to do the shoot to recreate the whole moment. Like, I think we were like intermixed with the girls from that season, but I just kind of stayed out. I didn't want to be in the middle of the drama. There was different drama with that season. I don't even remember who all was on it, but um, it was fun to go back and be a part of it and like eat all the catering and then just go sit in the back corner because they didn't care about filming me. They wanted to film the current girls. So I was just like on set and then like kind of gone again. So that was nice. It was like the pressure was off for all the drama parts. And I just got to be there for the fun parts. This is the fun, you know, the photo shoot. Um, so that was good. And it's heartbreaking to know that she's passed. I mean, I don't, I don't remember the exact reason. I don't think it was um, healthy choices. She no, was a ball she of. Passed, she passed. Um, God's pregnant from wrong, but I believe it was breast cancer. It she was. Actually, yeah, she actually, and I, I know what you're referring to. She actually had recovered from Oops. her addiction. So you're fine. She recovered from her addiction. She was clean for years and years, and it was cancer. Guys, right? Let me know if I'm wrong or right. But I, it was cancer. It wasn't anything okay. like. Okay. Bad, bad activity related. Yes, thank you guys. It was breast cancer that took her out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's just unacceptable in this day and age to be passing away at that age of breast cancer. And I greatly apologize to everyone. I just, I don't know much about her backstory. I just knew that there was, um, you know, a history of mm -hmm. things. Things. And, um, I thought she was funny. I thought she was just, to me, she was like a Britney. She was just mm -hmm. entertaining and like, just, you could just sit back and watch her. And it, and it was, it was fun. And she was beautiful and very sweet to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would just met a little bit, but um, it was a fun day. Cause then I got to go back to the hotel and I didn't have to wear a microphone and have a camera on me. And I could just like wander and do whatever I wanted. <laughs> so that yeah. was good. that's the top, that's the side of top model that's good. I will tell you that. Mm -hmm. And so after cycle four, did you model? Tell us what you're doing nowadays. What's going on? Yeah. So after I got home from top model, I think it was like November-ish. Um, I married my fiance, now hubby, in January. So we came home and we just did it. We had the world's tiniest wedding. It wasn't flashy. It wasn't big. It was he he's a musician so like his whole like persona is like out there and people know and he's toured in albums and he's he, he's got a public persona and then i came off of all of this like top model stuff like way too public feeling we just wanted to like get married in a little ceremony in this back little chapel it was just about us and not about anything else and that was like it was it was perfect but i did not get the wedding dress off that mannequin i think michelle said that i did not get it Oh, I wanted it, but they, I don't think they would give it to me because it was like a free wedding dress. Yes. I'll take her. It'll, it'll cost me a hundred bucks. Perfect. But I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't get married in that dress. It was cute though. Um, so then we got married and then top model aired and it all came out. That was like, I think it started airing in like March, like spring mm -hmm. of 2005. And I couldn't say or do anything or contact an agency until my episode aired of me getting kicked off. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I, I couldn't say anything. So then once I got kicked off, I was like, game on. So I started like trying to set things up and it was just like, it was hard. It's hard to break into that world, that industry. And then um, talking to Kaylin, talking to Nole Marin and like he helped facilitate the whole thing, went out there and it was between two different agencies, ID and VNY. And VNY had a model apartment for me that I could move into. ID said, I don't care how you get here, where you stay, but if you sign with us today, like you got to be back in like five days and like be ready to go. Well, like I didn't, I needed a model apartment. I needed somewhere to like go. And um, Nole knew VNY very well. And I totally trusted him. He was amazing after this show. There was no reason for me to not take his advice. He, he knows this, this is his people. So I totally signed with them and it was awesome. And then I immediately like, I came home for like a weekend pack suitcases and I went back out to New York and I lived in the model apartment while todd my husband like sold everything we owned like everything his cars like um furniture packed up dealt with stuff and we had two cats at the time put the cats at the sister's house until we could find a place he actually moved to the model apartment with me 
We ha- like yes, that. But my agency was oh, nice. You have they the let best me do husband. that. I do have the best husband because listen to this. So they let him come um, when typically it was like for young girls and like a parent, not you know, like a chaperone, not for like a husband. We had to share a twin bed on the bottom of a bunk bed in one bedroom apartment with like eight bunk beds. Mm-hmm. A twin bed for two people. You're husband- like this every night. Your oh husband God. loves you. And that really kicked our button gears to find our own apartment. Then we did, and we moved to Chelsea. Um, and it was fun. We had an adventure for a good couple of years out in New York. It was it was awesome. And he got to play some music out there and do his thing. Um, yeah, it was it was good. I'm very satisfied with my time in New York and what I got to do in my career. It was it was good. Yes, yes. And what are you doing now? Well, now, um, I work for, I'm like kind of an accounts payable person at um, our very best friend's company. They are growing left and right. They own Subway restaurants and other businesses and they just keep growing and expanding. So I help them out in their office. Um, But also my husband, we've been, we've had a lot of businesses. So we had a few liquor stores during the whole COVID thing, which was good. Everyone likes to have cocktails during COVID. And then we did sell those off. and we have currently we do have a uh, a resort, if you will, in the middle of Wisconsin. It's a bar, restaurant, hotel. So that's really fun. We like renovated it all. We have a couple different business partners, our family and our best friends that I also happen to work for. They're all part of it. So we converted like this big restaurant and we put hotel rooms in and it's on the lake that um, Todd's family's cabin is on. And it's this beautiful town. So that's really cool. We also have um, a vodka brand. <laughs> Tonka Vodka, short for a minute Tonka Vodka. So that's been fun. We kind of developed that while we had liquor stores. So we just, we dabble in a lot of stuff. It's never, it's never dull around here. You are busy. Busy. Busy, busy, busy. You are busy. Yes, you don't have time to check Instagram. You don't have time to check Instagram. I don't, I don't, I just, it's a time suck. I said, no, I don't, I don't love social media. I'm sorry. Well, listen, here's my final question to you. If you were standing before Tyra Banks right now, what would you say to her? I've thought about this and I still don't have a good answer. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I would be speechless still. She can intimidate you and inspire you all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess I might just have some questions about like how things really went down, like what you really, what really happened behind the scenes and why you did things the way you do. Was it all planned out? Was it all this or like that? And then just how the hell are you as a mother and a wife and a woman? I don't know. Just see how she's at at a personal level. She's a person. I I would want to have a real conversation about not this, I guess, and just, hey, girl, what's up? Is there anything else you want to contribute to your Antonio on Cycle 4 chat before I let I you think I, I don't think so. I think uh, I think I've done a lot of stuff today. But you did a great job. It's out. It's out. It's done. And I can I finally feel peace. Thank you so much for giving me this way to say things that I've it's been heavy on my heart. Certain things that I never got to talk about and explain. And Oliver, you're like the sweetest. You're so kind. You are amazing. You are beautiful. And you give all of these girls um, a chance to explain themselves and like make it real because we never, we don't get that chance. We are who people say we are, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's who we are. You, thank you for letting us all talk and say our piece. And I appreciate that. And I'll send it right back to you and say, none of this, what I do over here would be possible without the participation from you guys. And at this point, it's been over 100 contestants of Top Model who I've That's been awesome. um, blessed with a chance to speak to. And I am grateful for this little corner in the internet that I feel like God and the universe has blessed me and my friends with and the work that we're able to do. Listen, we don't care about being recognized because I don't. Um, we don't care about getting the most views because we don't care. What really matters to me is that one, you guys, the contestants, get something out of it. Whatever whatever that is, you get it out of it. And the people watching are um, entertained and they're happy um, at the chance yeah. of reconnecting with someone that they love from a show that they still love to this day. So thank you. 
Oh, I do have one more thing I want to say. Thank you for everybody, every fan, every person that supported me. Every oh, someone calling her. Tyra, are you too late, girl? She just spilled all the tea. Oh. I can't. No, you're back. You're back. Are you there? Yes. Uh huh. I see you and I hear you. Okay. So my mic just went off. My son was just trying to call me. I think he needs a ride home from his sleepover. <laughs> oh, okay, just, yeah. So we got to get you off. So I tried to de not decline it, but um, people have been really kind, like way too kind and supportive and loving. And I don't know, it's just really cool to be a part of something that's a lot bigger than I am. And oh, thank you to everyone that has said anything nice about me ever on all through all of this. It means a lot. You have no idea because it's an experience. And when people can say nice things to you, it's pretty special. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. Thank you guys for being so patient with all of these um, issues we had today. It has been an amazing chat, right, y'all? Um, I guess we're gonna go ahead and say goodbye to Rebecca. She has to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear a word. I keep like declining texts and phone calls for oh, my no, you're, kid. You're, so you're, listen, Rebecca, I'm gonna let you go. Kisses, hugs, everybody. Okay, I know, I know what that means. Uh, thank you. Bye. Listen, guys, thank y'all so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. Thank y'all for being so patient today. Let's, again, thank Rebecca so much for sharing her story, sharing her experiences, sharing her time with us. I am grateful, and I know y'all out there are grateful. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, as I always tell y'all hoes, be sure to parade and kegel. Make sure you're subscribed to the Officer's YouTube channel with the notification bell hit because you never know who I'm talking to, what's going on, what is going on. But trust, you don't want to be locked in a spot getting all this tea, honey. I love you guys so much. Thank you. And be safe out there. Do something nice for yourself and someone else today. And pray and kegel when it's all said and done. Bye!